Good evening. I have met many of you, but for those of you who do not know me, I'm Mark Sandoval, Harbor Director for the Ventura County Channel, uh, Channel Islands Harbor. I thank you for taking the time to join us this evening. We have nearly 600 registered tonight, and I am very heartened to see this level of interest in the development of the Channel Islands Harbor. It is very important that we plan and proceed with harbor development, which is widely supported and creates an exciting, vibrant harbor, which meets the financial objectives of the county and the city of Oxnard. So how do we get here? The harbor was created in the mid 1960s as a county property. It was annexed to the city of Oxnard in 1963. And part of that annexation agreement included a stipulation that the county would continue to direct and oversee the development of the harbor. At the outset, the county made a decision that the harbor must be operated as an enterprise, which means that the costs associated with operating and maintaining the harbor must come solely from the revenues generated by the harbor with no county general fund subsidy. Now, this is a very important mandate as we proceed with visioning and planning for harbor development. In order to accomplish this, the county decided to develop the harbor through long-term ground leases, utilizing private developers to build in and around the harbor, a strategy called pay-as-you-go by the first harbor director, Tom Volk. But for decades, this strategy was successful as the harbor was developed with marinas, hotels, residential complexes, and a myriad of marine related and visitor serving retail and commercial. In the early 2000s, the harbor reached a point where the initial development was starting to age and competing regional development led to the decline of the popularity of the harbor. A number of the lessees simply walked away from their leases, including those operating the Casa Serena Hotel, Fisherman's Wharf and the Whale's Tail Restaurant. The process utilized by the Harbor Department for development and redevelopment, which as I indicated had worked for decades, included initial project planning and then the identification of developers for development and then public outreach to obtain other agency and public input. Next slide, please. In 2015, as a proposed Fisherman's Wharf project was moving through the process, a group of residents recommended a new development planning process, which included upfront public visioning for harbor development before a developer was identified and the development was designed. Now this flow chart that you're looking at was developed by Werner Keller and Lorraine Efres, and it illustrates the, the first part of the process. And as you can see, visioning is right in the center of it. In 2019, we adopted this new process, which brings us here tonight. Now we currently have a number of harbor parcels which are either undeveloped or under short-term leases for which new development needs to be considered. These parcels are the subject of this visioning you will see tonight. Next slide, please. Now in line with the visioning component of our new harbor planning and development process, we began visioning for new harbor development last June. Since the process is designed to be inclusive, it seemed important to develop a diverse steering committee, which we did. The steering committee includes one county supervisor. Now, initially it was Kelly Long, who is very active in the harbor, including rowing. And this year it's now Matt Levere, who has shown great interest in the harbor and is excited to be part of this process. Representing the city of Oxnard is Ashley Golden, the assistant city manager. Steve Kenny is the executive director of the Channel Islands Harbor Lessee Association, representing harbor businesses. Audrey Keller is a chair of the Channel Islands Neighborhood Council and has been extremely engaged in providing out of the box ideas for the harbor. Renee Ayu represents the Harbor and Beach Community Alliance, a large group of residents who have been closely engaged with harbor development and who are very passionate about seeing the harbor developed in the right manner. Frank Laza is a resident and harbor business owner. Christina Brewer is a Silver Strand Beach resident and is on the board of the Channel Islands Beach Community District. Tom Peterson is a harbor resident, business owner, and one of the most active captains in and around the harbor. Bernard Coomer and Carol Taylor are residents who have brought passion and a variety of skills to the process. Marilyn Miller is the Harbor Department Director of Planning and Development and myself round out the steering committee. 
I wanna publicly thank these individuals for all the work that they have put in, but more importantly, for the ideas and passion they have brought to the process. Now, we have developed a mission statement, which is the Channel Islands Harbor Visioning Committee, aided by a professional urban planning and economic development team and extensive public input, will create a master vision plan, which will provide the framework for development in the harbor for the next few decades. Next slide. Now, in an effort to provide professional expertise and overall management of the visioning process, we hired a multidiscipline consulting team led by Dave Sargent of Sargent Town Planning, which provides urban planning and design, Susan Hardin of Circle Point to provide public outreach, Greensfelder Commercial Real Estate to provide retail strategy, and Lisa Wise Consulting to provide economic and coastal policy direction. So before I turn it over to the consulting team for the presentation, I want to again thank you for participating in this essential component of the visioning process. The Channel Islands Harbor is a significant part of Ventura County, and it is very important to hear from a wide range of county residents as to how and what we should develop in the harbor. So with that, I turn it over to Susan Harden to continue with the presentation. Great, thanks Mark, and good evening everybody. Um, I just wanna give you a sense of what to expect in the workshop this evening. So we'll start with just a short introduction, um, give you a sense of what, what has happened to date, where we are now, and a little bit of what we've heard. Um, we'll, we'll take some time to do a, a bit of regional, local, and economic um, setting, kind of setting the tone and the, what the economic conditions are in the area. But the bulk of the evening will be spent really going through those opportunity sites and what public realm improvements can be made. So spending the time really delving into what are those concepts and possibilities for the harbor. Um, we'll take a few minutes at the end to let you know what the next steps are as well. Now, so what we'll do in, in lieu of being able to be face to face and have a lot of interaction and discussion, um, we're doing this virtually, of course, but we do want to make it as interactive as possible. So throughout the presentation, we'll be taking some time to pause and doing a poll, an online poll, asking questions here and there to get a sense from the more than 300 people that are already on um, in tonight's workshop. We have over 500, I think, signed up. So we're going to get a good amount of participation. So we'll be doing those polling questions throughout. And we'll also be addressing questions as we go through the evening as well. So you'll see a Q&A box either at the bottom or the top of your screen, depending on what kind of device you're using. And we welcome and encourage you to pose a question or a comment at any time. Um, given the number of participants that we have, it's not likely that we'll be able to answer every question or some questions may be a little more complex than we can answer in a short um, workshop, but we will be posting all the questions and answers or a, a grouping those into an FAQ, a frequently asked questions document and posting that to the, work, or to the website. In addition, the workshop is being recorded and that will be posted to the website as well. Along with the polling questions that are being asked of you this evening, those will be posted on the site so that others can partake in that same poll. So Mark alluded to the, the, so we are in the visioning process and for the last several months, that has been what the team has been up to, um, starting with really delving in and exploring the site and understanding all the nuances and the lay of the land. The online survey that went out, and I'll summarize that in just a minute. Um, this, the great guidance by the steering committee, regular, regular emails, lots and lots of participation there, along with meetings of individual stakeholders um, throughout the process, which is bringing us to the workshop here today, where we're excited to share with you some preliminary concepts and ideas um, for the harbor. After today, it doesn't end. Um, we'll be further vetting out the vision concepts, um, doing a little more specification to them and, and pulling together a vision plan that can be adopted. And it's not a project plan, but it is a vision and that guidance. After that vision plan is adopted, there's still more work to do to implement that vision and there'll be further planning, outreach and development that'll occur at that time. As I mentioned, um, stakeholder interviews were really important and helped to really influence what the concepts are that you'll be seeing this evening. Um, and some of those stakeholders are listed there, the different groups, some developers, organizations, um, lots of great input from these organizations and individuals. 
And I also noted the survey and we had a great response to the survey, nearly 1900 responses to the survey. Um, the actual, all of the results are posted on the website. So if you wanna dig in and really read through the responses to each question, I welcome you and encourage you to do that. Um, but just a quick summary of some of those questions. When asked, how often do you visit? 35% um, of respondents live here at the Harbor, but still over 50% are frequent visitors to the Harbor as well. Uh, how often or how do you get to the harbor? Not surprisingly, it's mostly car. Um, the potential improvements that we'll be sharing tonight, hopefully you'll see definitely an increase in walking and biking access as well. When asked people what are their favorite hobby or favorite activities or experiences at the harbor, um, the top by far was just walking around and spending and biking through the harbor area along with dining. And of course, farmer's market and other events was also a top, top vote-getter too. We also asked a question about what are some of the key challenges and the top five responses are listed here on the screen. Um, not enough to do was the top along with um, just far, not too far behind inadequate maintenance and maybe that people don't know enough about the harbor and what it has to offer. And then we also asked an open-ended question. Um, what, what other features, what other things would you like to see in the harbor? And you can see some of those key themes um, listed at the bullets below. So people wanting to see more restaurants and bars and restaurants and entertainment, um, lots of different ways people would like to see more public space, whether it's event space or park spaces, um, opportunities for hotels, docking areas, and even more bike and pedestrian pathways. So that's just a little sense of that survey and some of what we've heard so far. And again, all this information has influenced um, what we'll be sharing with you tonight. But before I turn it over to the design team, I'm just going to do a couple of quick polls. And this, the purpose is twofold. One is just to get a sense of who's here this evening, but also just to give you some experience and a taste of what it's like to do these online polls. So this first question is just which of the following best describes you? And we have the choices listed there on the screen. And you'll also see an elect, like a polling um, box pop up as well. And that one is where we want you to actually click your response. So you can look at the one on the screen or the, the slide, but the one that we want you to respond to is that box. And you can actually click on that and move it around a little bit as well. So if it's blocking your view later on of pictures that are on the screen, you can move that. Um, for this one, you can check any of those that apply because you may live, work, recreate, all in this in the same in the harbor area. So um, we have right now about 300 and 15 people that are here. Um, so we'll see how many, we're right about 250 that have responded to this question so far. So we'll watch those numbers go up and then we will highlight the responses um, on the screen. If you're having any trouble, um, we can put a note in the Q&A. We'll see if we can help you out. But also if you just, later on, you can even answer the question in the, in the Q&A if you are unable to get the poll launched. Or as I mentioned, we'll also have these polling questions on the website so you can respond to them there as well. So we're getting close to our, we have about 90% of people that have responded. So um, let's go ahead and end that poll, Andrew. And then we will share the results. And we've got a lot of folks here that live in the harbor. So about 75% of the people that are on the call tonight live in the harbor with a quite a amount 50 percent or more that um, recreate in the harbor as well so we'll be saving all these results and we'll have a, um, a summary report from tonight's workshop and all these will be in there as well so quick question or the second poll um, that we'll ask before we turn it over to the design team to david Sargent. let's go ahead and you can stop sharing and we'll go to the next slide Next slide. David, if you want to go to the next slide. Do we lose our, lose David? No, no, we, we okay. lost the ability to advance for some uh -oh. reason. I well, have what, no let, okay, well, we are working that out. Let's, um, uh, Andrew, you can probably launch the other poll. And this is just a question of, did you take that first Harbor Visioning Survey? And I see a couple notes in the Q&A about people that maybe didn't receive that um, opportunity to take that survey. So we'll definitely be interested in hearing some of your responses on what you see. Hopefully some of the, the responses that we did get are in line with some of your thinking. There is, as I mentioned, the summary of all of those nearly 1900 responses that we did get. 
Um, so encourage you to take a look at those and um, we're still taking input. So there's an email address that's associated with this project. So you can take a look at that survey. And if you have some other ideas, we would love to hear that too. So did you take the first survey? Um, which it's actually great to see if people that are on the, the in the workshop tonight that maybe didn't take that survey because this is another opportunity for you to weigh in um, on the concepts. So we've got close to a little over 90% right now. We'll give another five seconds. All right, Andrew. So we'll share those results. So about 46 people took the survey. 40% um, did not, and there's some that aren't sure. And I can totally imagine or understand that because in today's day with all of the various online activities that are going on, it's hard to remember what you did and didn't take, right? And what, what it was for and what it wasn't for. So um, it's great to have all of those people that did take the survey. Hopefully you'll see your ideas represented. And if you didn't take the survey, we definitely want your input this evening and would love to hear more about what your thoughts are and the concepts that'll be shared tonight. And so with that, I will turn it over to David. Thank you very much, Susan. I hope the advance button will work, but something is, I've never seen something like this happen before. Excuse me just a minute. We've rehearsed this a hundred times. Oh, I think I may know what it is. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, so the Channel Islands Harbor, as I'm sure you know, is at the south end of Victoria Avenue, at the water's edge between the port, between the Port Wainimi Navy Base and the Oxnard Beach neighborhoods. Within the 10 mile trade area rad radius, Mark mentioned that it's important that the harbor be self-supporting. So the main trade area where visitors come from the most often is about 10 miles. The harbor is about 15 minutes off the 101 freeway, which is a challenge in terms of attracting customers and visitors. It's adjacent to the Port of Wainimi, the new, newer Seabridge development. Other destinations and attractions that are nearby include Camarillo outlets within this straight area, downtown Oxnard, the collection Ventura Harbor, downtown Ventura. And within a 30 mile radius, if, if people choose to come visit the harbor, other destinations they may enjoy would be the Reagan Library, some of the agricultural uh, sites that can be seen out in the Santa Paula area, Ojai Carpinteria, Santa Barbara. So that it's really the middle of a lot that's going on. Uh, if you zoom out, there's a number of airports, obviously small private aviation airports nearby and then, Ventura, and then Santa Barbara, Burbank and LAX farther away. And very interestingly, for those who choose to come to the coast to cool off from the Santa Clarita area or the Antelope Valley and other inland areas, you can come right down 126 and down Victoria Avenue and there you are at the harbor and with uh, direct access to the Channel Islands National Park and Catalina. So it's on the edge of the local, the, the everyday shopping trade area. It's not at the center of it, it's on the edge, which is a bit of a challenge in terms of attracting the patronage that is needed to keep the help, keep the place self-supporting. And as Mark mentioned, there's quite a few new destinations that people can go to dine, shop, walk around, enjoy themselves that have popped up since the harbor was developed in the 60s that have been taking away customers. The good news is that if the, if the harbor becomes a desirable place for people to spend a weekend or a week or vacation in the summer, the these other competing locations are potentially locations that visitors would find compelling to, to also visit. So that once again, one could think of the harbor being not so much on the edge of things as in the middle of many things. One of the other challenges is although there's some beautiful and expensive homes along the beach area, many of them are second homes or not occupied full-time, which 
further challenges the harbor in terms of uh, sales and, and business. So all the more important that it attract people from a wider area. So how do you do that? Um, it's clearly not a place that a shopping center that people go to for their everyday conveniences are going to be very, is going to be very practical. So we're focusing our economic and retail consultants have advised us to think of this as a specialty or experience retail or hospitality location where people are mostly buying goods and services that are uh, emotionally driven and discretionary. And you come here because you want to be here, not just because you had to buy something. So the sense of place is very important. This location probably can only support about four acres of these kinds of uses in the near future, but they got about 28 acres that they need to lease. So clearly it's important to have a harbor related anchor use that the uses be themed around the harbor's main asset, which is it's a beautiful place on the water. And it's incredibly important to make it a place that people want to come more often, spend more time. And the surveys that we we have received the results to say that the things that people would value the most here would be walking, biking, dining, farmers markets, special events, rowing, paddling, boating, which are all the things that would in, in fact leverage the destination quality of the harbor and provide the basis for economic success. So However, the economic feasibility in this day and age with the competing uh, other attractions requires diversification. Clearly the core is retail, food, beverage, entertainment, education about the water and the Channel Islands, boating and all the fun. But they, the, the harbor hasn't been drawing those as a lot of vacant land and vacant buildings would, would tell you. And there's not enough of very unlikely that enough of those uses could ever be attracted in the foreseeable future to fill the harbor with enough revenue and visitorship to sustain it. So we're going to need to have a balanced mix that includes some additional hotels. There's one hotel that's on the way. We'll show you that in a bit. And very likely there need to be some housing mixed in in order to make it economically viable. And if more if some more people live here or lodge here for periods of time that'll have the effect of increasing the amount of patronage of the businesses per vehicle trip to the harbor in other words the the number of vehicle trips and parking required and congestion per thousand dollars spent in the harbor would start to go down <laughs> So the harbor in its existing condition, it's surrounded by some very wide streets, which don't give you immediately the image of, of that you've arrived at a, at a really cool uh, waterfront destination. However, they are a, a lot of already publicly owned real estate and facilities that we are gonna show you some concepts of how these could be rather simply refined and improved to be more of the kind of walking, biking, fun environment that folks have been saying they would like. Clearly the water is the most beautiful thing. I mean, that was built as a public works project in the early 60s and they did a fine job of building the, the water channels themselves and the docks and the slips and, and the, the environment on the water is a lovely thing. The environment around the edge of the water is, is less optimized at this point. It's relatively narrow sidewalks and just not a very, it's, it's not a place that's screaming, you know, come, let's go see what's here. It, it's nice to walk along them, but it, it isn't competitive with all the other places that are much nicer to go spend time these days. So we're going to show you a bunch of concepts for how to make it so. The main point, the main way to make it so, so here's the whole harbor. There's the South Harbor, which is the, the part of the harbor that the county operates down south of Channel Islands Boulevard. And then the North Harbor is within the city of Oxnard and it's north of Channel Islands Bridge. It was developed over the last 20 or so years from agricultural land for the most part to 
a really vital mix of a lot of housing and beautiful shopping centers along Victoria Avenue and at Woolley Road. And there are, uh, there are access gateways at Woolley Road and along Harbor, coming down from, from Ventura along Harbor, coming down from the freeway and Ventura and Victoria and coming from Oxnard and Port Wainimi along Channel Islands Boulevard. And we would suggest that these be improved for walking and biking to help the people who live around here come into the South Harbor uh, with, for in a more uh, pleasant and active and recreational fashion uh, rather than just driving all the time. There are existing systems of walkways developed around the North Harbor, uh, connecting a bunch of the housing to the commercial amenities over here and some beautiful spaces uh, along the water's edge. But those don't connect at all to the South Harbor, except unless you happen to have a boat. And so it's creating this kind of an environment with beautiful new facilities right along the water's edge. So the South Harbor needs to pull up its socks and compete with that, we believe. So to which end, as, as in terms of access and, and wayfinding around the harbor, the first place you, the, the main entries to the harbor are at the intersection of Channel Islands Boulevard and Harbor Boulevard and Victoria Avenue and Channel Islands Boulevard. We think it's very important that a, a walkable, bikeable and more attractive face for the harbor be developed around the edges on Harbor and Channel Islands in Victoria. So just a quick inventory of the sites Mark was talking about. This blue site on the end of the peninsula is already slated to be a nice hotel. We'll show you some pictures of it in a sec. These dark paint pieces are parcels that are available now or very soon for lease to new development. So they offer a, a near term, very strong possibility of creating much more significant attraction that would generate a lot more fun for visitors and a lot more revenue for the harbor. These lighter pink pieces are pieces that have existing leases that go for a while, but that under the right circumstances, it's possible that some improvement, if, if these dark pink, pink parcels start to improve a lot, there could be some reinvestment in the light ones the water's edge environment we're going to show you. We think it's terribly important that however these individual parcels are developed, it's very important they be connected to one another so that if someone visits one of them, they can walk or bike to the next one rather than getting in their car and driving around. Because as soon as they get in their car, they might, as, they might just as well decide, well, let's just go up and check out Ventura Harbor or go over to the Camarillo outlets or Santa Barbara. So you want to keep them biking and walking and these promenade system we're going to show you is, is a terribly important piece of that, as is the potential of a water taxi system so that you can go directly from parcel to parcel along the water, which is so much more beautiful than the land side. So we're going to start now by showing you a couple concept of concepts for a few of these key parcels and at each point we're going to stop and ask you a few questions. So the most, the, the, the greatest opportunity and the most widely discussed, debated, and, and in some cases disagreed about is the Fisherman's Wharf site, which is at the intersection of Channel Islands Boulevard and Victoria Avenue here at the northeast corner of the South Harbor. And it was developed a long time ago as a shopping center with these wooden buildings that have sort of a Cape Cod look to them. And over time, the businesses, not, not every business has faded. Topper's Pizza is doing very well, but most of the businesses have faded and it's not, and it's coming up for release and uh, it needs a new, it, need, it needs something new. Here's what it looks like from the street. It looks pr pretty nice. These are backs. These are sort of dolled up backs. These are not fronts. The fronts are all facing into the parking lot and it's things are not very busy these days. The water side though is lovely. The wharf after you know that gives Fisherman's Wharf its name is on the water. You can see it very clearly from Channel Islands Bridge. We're going to show you some ideas about how that 
could be repurposed and renovated and become the center point of something very different. So the kinds of uses that we've heard from the public and very much so from the steering committee that's just full of good ideas. In fact, one of the members of the steering committee made this pretty sketch is some kind of a public market. We're thinking that there's a possibility that it could be a venue where the best of the, the bounties of the sea, this fresh seafood coming out of the ocean and the best of Ventura County's agriculture for which our county is so famous could be showcased and along with local arts and crafts and a really the, these kinds of food halls are very popular throughout and increasingly popular throughout the region and the nation. Also then the environment along the wharf where you can dine outside, you could rent boats, you could watch the fish come in, you can uh, just enjoy the waterfront atmosphere and stroll and shop. We think that there's an important role to be played on our, our retail strategy advisor tells us that it would be very important to have some tie-ins with the Channel Islands and perhaps some educational facilities. There's already a small touch aquarium there operated by Oxnard College, but perhaps an expanded visitor center where people could learn about the Channel Islands, maybe uh, buy tickets to go out to the islands with island packers. And then some kind of mixed use development where there would be retail shops along the water's edge, perhaps some office spaces, perhaps a, a, a boutique hotel uh, and, and courtyard, a courtyard full of dining activities. And probably in, in order to make the thing very profitable to help pay for some of the much needed improvements, some housing could be integrated, whether it's upstairs from some of the retail uses, we could be oriented toward internal courtyards. Some of it could be over shops looking out over the water. And there's an example in Ventura Harbor that's just being completed now, which is called Portside. Actually, uh, my firm was involved with master planning this. We didn't design it, but it, the harbor in Ventura was looking for a mix of waterfront shops and, and housing to generate the income they needed. So this project was is, has just about it, it's still under construction, but it was pointed out to us by some of the steering committees and as an example of something that could be part of the mix uh, here somewhere in the harbor. So we've made this co little conceptual design. Now this isn't a project. This is an illustration of a possibility that we've made just based on what we've heard people would like to see. And since we're designers, we've made some sketches of how that might work. So a lot of open space along the along a rebuilt and expanded wharf, a, a broad waterfront promenade, a small a small street that lets people come in and find parking and circulate and mo and walk. Very pedestrian friendly little shopping street, and perhaps a courtyard, and then probably up toward the corner, it would be filled with the visitors serving commercial uses, maybe some boutique offices on upper floors, some kind of a visitor center we would hope. Then perhaps part of this could be a boutique hotel, maybe a hundred or 150 rooms uh, looking out over the water. And then very likely some apartments or condos uh, or live work units that would uh, help support the cost of building all of these public serving facilities, which the retail alone might not be able to pay for, and then a lot of water recreation and access and park and public restrooms and such. So the payoff would be in this op these open spaces could provide venues for special special events, uh, just get everyday sort of gathering, dining outdoors, uh, something sort of an, it could be sort of an annex to the existing farmer's market, as well as there could be outdoor performance venues. We're gonna show you an idea for that a little farther down Victoria too. Here's a cross section drawing we've made that shows how a market hall could be built right up on Channel Islands Boulevard next to the lighthouse, which everybody wants to keep. Some other retail or restaurant buildings. And then if, the, if this building is a hotel or condos or some offices on upper floors, the ground floor would for sure be very would for sure be programmed with shops and restaurants 
so that there were lively, active, fun uses all adjacent to all of these public open spaces along the water's edge. Perhaps a hotel might be up here and housing over there. You might have a situation where there's some parking buried in here in a structured way, or it could be that there's just surface parking over there, if, except surface parking doesn't generate revenue, so that might not be feasible, but you know we'll, we'll find out over time. One thing important to point out in some earlier schemes that have been shown for this site, the ground floors were all parking, which would reflect it. So this isn't, this is another example of basically a ground floor that has parking in it isn't very much fun to walk along. So we wouldn't, we're not suggesting that that be an option. We're suggesting that shops would be at least you know, 30, 40, 50 feet deep and parking would be in behind them. So it would be invisible to the shoppers and pedestrians who are enjoying the space. We've made a little model of, of what this could be like if the market hall here is on the right and these, uh, the, the hotel shops, maybe some condos and apartments uh, or offices could be on the south side of the plaza. So the, 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 these larger buildings would really define this as a public space. You could have smaller pavilions and restaurants and, and vendors within the plaza looking out over the water. And then when you're down in the plaza, it might look like this. It could be very full of life on a daily basis and then really full of life for special events. Here's a look, here's a, a view looking down this little this little access street that might be coming in off Channel Islands Boulevard with the expanded wharf on the right, where you could have, you could perhaps buy fish right off the boat, could have a bicycle path as well as a pedestrian path in this little, the little street so cars could come in and see what's going on and then find a parking space. And with this activity spilling out of this market hall into the plaza, uh, a little bit every day and a lot on special events. So, Susan, would you like to please uh, ask folks what they think? Sure, so this is gonna be our first um, poll regarding the, the vision concepts that are being shared this evening. Um, and this one's specific to what David was presenting on Fisherman's Wharf. So there's a lot of different ideas that um, David went over and we just wanna kind of get a sense from, from you all on those that you think could contribute to a successful Fisherman's Wharf. And so what you see on the polling box that just popped up is the same as what you see, what we'd see on the, the screen, or I mean on the slide, there's just some pictures there to kind of jog your memory because that was a lot of information. Um, and here again, you can answer more than one. You can check all that apply, anything that you think could really make the Fisherman's Wharf area um, very successful and that you think that would, would work really well there. Um, while people are answering those questions, we've been answering lots or answering that question. We've been answering lots of questions in the Q&A. Um, so I encourage you at some point to, to dig into some of those, but also want you to be able to really hear what's being shared as well. So take your time kind of going, dipping into those. And we'll also make sure that all of those will be included into the summary report as well. But some of the things we're hearing a lot of support for um, a far, for a farmer's market or for a public market, excuse me, entertainment venues, um, pedestrian improvements, plus some other ideas that are coming in from individuals as well. So we'll be including all of those as considerations um, in the, the report as well. There's also some some concerns being expressed on maybe the level of intensity, others maybe that it's not intense enough. So there's a little bit of, of differing opinions there. Um, lots of questions and comments about the market area and the study. Um, and again, all of those are being answered as they as they come in to the degree we can. Um, we'll try to keep up on all of those. And, and we also just love taking your comments and any comments you wanna make um, positive or negative, we would love to hear. Um, we have about 75% who have finished. There's a lot of choices here. So letting people think about how you wanna to respond to this poll. And you can, again, um, move that box around a little bit if you wanna see some of those pictures to jog your memory a little. Um, we've got about 82% of folks that have responded. There were a number of questions about the survey and how how it went out and um, we did try to do as, as much as possible to get that survey out into the hands of, of um, stakeholders, residents and, and business owners and other stakeholders in the, the community, um, nearly 1900, but of course that means we missed people and there's certainly some folks commenting on that in the Q&A and we'll 
Um, I think Mark had made a comment that we'll try to get that survey. We can make it live again and let people, more people respond. It's not a problem to open that back up and get some more responses. So again, we're still in the visioning phase and we can add more, more content and information. Uh, you've got about almost 90%, which is about what we were getting on the other polling questions. And for those that may be having trouble or just don't feel like you want to answer these questions right now, um, these questions will be available online. And there is, um, what's not on the screen is an other question or, cat or other response, but that is allowed in that online polling box. So you can see that little box there. And um, we can't actually have you respond to that live as, or to, to write your answer in, but when, if you do reply to that on the website, you will be able to answer that. So let's take about three more seconds here and Andrew will just go ahead and end that poll. I think that's about as many as we're gonna get. And we're sharing the results right now. So you can see um, the top vote getter there, 92% of people really would like to see some more restaurants and shops and a, maybe even a small grocer. Not surprising, that's consistent with what we've been hearing all along. Over 50% for an improved wharf for the fishermen, commercial fishermen. Um, in the 80s there, you see for more uh, water recreation. And I did see some comments on that as well. So people wanting even more paddle, paddle boarding as well and those sorts of things. 88% um, for a public market and some significant support there for a national or for an anchor, such as a national park or learning center. Um, again, we're seeing a lot of comments in the Q&A too on education and educational centers. 61% um, for performing arts and also some support for boutique hotel. Um, and a little less maybe for the offices, about 40% for housing and then 6% for others. And we have a bunch of ideas that were expressed here as well in the Q&A. So we'll make sure those are all incorporated into this. So thanks very much for all those responses. And again, that'll all be incorporated into the report and we'll compare that with some of the survey and some of the um, these concepts and see what um, makes most the most sense going forward. So David. Thank you very much, Susan. Oh, not this again. This is really getting boring. It doesn't like it when you stop, huh? <laughs> it, it, it just wants, oh, there we go. Okay, fine. Thank you. I, I, so the next piece we're gonna look at is just south. So Fisherman's Wharf was up here at the corner. So now we've just skipped past the, the big uh, public launch ramp. Now we're down to this piece, which is currently a small marina and it's on a short-term lease that's coming up. And the committee, once again, had what we think is a really cool idea for what might be possible here. The parcel includes uh, a big open area, a little building, a parking lot, and a bunch of uh, water side space, as you can see. And the idea was that a unique lodging facility. Uh, I don't know how many of you may be familiar with the hard to find, but worth the trouble, little uh, waypoint uh, facility in Ventura, just off Front Street. It's a trailer hotel, as it were, with classic Airstream trailers, and you can bring your own trailer. So basically it's, a, it's sort of a trailer campground hotel facility where you can have, where there's commu communal dining and barbecuing and outdoor fireplace facilities. And it's pretty cool up there. And imagine how cool it would be down here on the water. Uh, there's an example of a similar one up in Ojai where you can, where you can stay in a classic trailer. You could bring your own RV uh, in some cases and have a very unique, possibly bohemian kind of a, of, of a stay that would be a, a pretty good alternative to you know a, just a just a motel or a hotel up on the freeway somewhere, and down on the water, there would be the possibility of having an equivalent uh, facility where you could rent a houseboat rather than a house trailer for a, a day or a week or a month, so that it would be a very unique lodging facility. It would also be a pretty low capital investment. Uh, uh, operation that could potentially be developed fairly quickly uh, and provide a really unique facility that you don't have any competition for. Um, the plan, so right, you know, so right, that's what it looks like from the air, but it might 
the existing building might stay as a little as a little uh, restroom facility and a little snack bar or other support facility with then trailers in, in on the land and then the boats down below and with a little with a little uh, water taxi stop at the end and guest docks so that other your friends and relatives could stop by and visit you uh, and then the circuit then the, the, the new improved a promenade that we showed you a minute ago could come right along along here in a new improved walk bike walkway bikeway that we'll show you in a bit could run along the edge of Victoria. So the idea here is that Victoria right now Victoria is kind of the backside of boat yards and we're looking at it as an opportunity for Victoria to be sort of a new front entry to a lot of these parcels. Susan? Great. So that was a little bit faster, as you see. We get to the pool here. The Fisherman's Wharf had a lot more going on there. Um, yes. So this, this is a little smaller of an area. Um, so same question here. We want to get a sense from you on what you've seen for this area south of the boat launch. Otherwise, some folks know this is parcel N1. Um, <laughs> but which of these different uses that David talked about do you think would be appropriate or could be appropriate here? Um, the very cool vintage trailer B&B a house hotel, a hostel, a destination restaurant on the dock, or even just visitor serving commercial, a mix of different kinds of commercial. And there is a little map to the left. If you're kind of not as familiar, some of you are very familiar with the harbor and everything, all the little nuances, but others might need a little refresher of where we're talking about. So that little yellow box represents the location. So we're seeing some, some positive comments in the Q&A. Um, some folks asking about or talking, saying that they like some of these ideas, they're fun and they're kind of exciting. Um, Dave or Mark, did you have any questions that you're seeing in the, the Q&A that you might want to address or or some common themes? Yeah, there, there's a couple that I think are important. Um, the first one is how the steering committee was comprised, how it was developed. And quite frankly, it was, it was basically the Harvard department. We you know, I knew that I wanted to have, or I, I knew that I wanted to have um, some representation from the county and city. I would have preferred some electeds. Um, we did get a, a, a board member, as I indicated. Weren't able to get a city council person. Um, and one person asked, why not uh, Supervisor Carmen Ramirez? Well, when we started this way back in June and July, um, you know, uh, now Supervisor Ramirez was, was still on the on, on city council. And we couldn't get an elected from the city, but we did end up with the assistant city manager. And, and the city has shown, uh, you know, very, very much support for the process. We just weren't able to get an elected. Um, we wanted to make sure that we had uh, business representation, which we do. We wanted to make sure we had um, resident representation, which we believe we did. Um, I mean, we weren't going to send out, you know, uh, we, we weren't going to send out request for for you know or an invitation to uh to apply for the committee but what we did do and i you know i've been here for uh, you know going on you know over two and a half years so there was a number of residents that, that i knew were very engaged with the harbor and 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 i've been engaged with them you know from day one not only those that may support our position but you know others that were very much opposed to the county's position for many many years and we made sure we got them on the committee as well so that's how the committee was developed and once we got uh, members of the committee uh, you know commit those committee members actually recommended you know others and so we did fill it out and I'm, I'm very happy with the committee we've gotten a lot of questions about the survey and what we wanted to do was early on have have a survey as to you know what what people thought that they would like to see in the harbor and and we we tried to get the word out we put it on next door we know next door is a very a uh, very well used uh, method of communication obviously we have a mailing list you know now that we had the committee formed we used the committee as well not only board members but you know but but the city representation to get to get the word out. Now, if, if people didn't know about it, I apologize. I mean, we put we put the word out virtually every way we could. Um, and as I said next door, we weren't trying to hide the fact there was a survey out there. We wanted to get input, and and that's that's how it went out. And we you know we continuously tried to get the word out. Um, all all the committee did. Uh, every committee member was trying to get the word out on the survey. 
So, you know, and then we did have a number of, uh, of questions about the survey and that's how it went out. We got nearly 2000 of them. Um, Great, thank but, but I think those two questions were very important to answer live. Great, thanks, Mark. <clears throat> There's also been a couple of questions about how do we improve the, the, the streets and the connections and gateways and hold tight because we will be getting to all that. And um, towards the end of the presentation, we're gonna tie it all together. David is with showing some um, gateway type improvements and improvements to the streets and sidewalk idea or area. So um, yep. here's the results for this area south of the boat launch. So the highest rated was the destination restaurant on the dock, but everything got a pretty high rating with the exception of a hostel. So not a, not a huge amount of, of, of um, support for that, but there is still clearly almost 20%. Um, the Botels, they're at 67% as well. So the other, almost everything else in the 60s. So some great results there. All right, David, to the next site. Yeah, well, wish me luck. I don't know why it just doesn't like to go. There we go. Okay, fine. There you go. I'll just yell at it. Um, so the next piece is further south. It's comprised of a number of parcels. This one has the sport fishing operation, which we certainly anticipate and, and, and plan and hope will, will remain. There may be some additional capacity uh, for activity within that parcel. There's a boat storage uh, area there, which is up for release. There's a bunch of water parcels here, which kind of like the Botel site up there has the possibility of be, being, re, you know, refresh in terms of what kinds of boats it can accommodate. Possibly a, we might be able to eat into the end of this boat yard to the north if they find more efficient ways to store boats or start doing some dry stacking. So there's a potentially significant piece of land there. So certainly we anticipate the sport fit. We hope that the sport fishing operation will thrive and expand and remain in either in its existing structure or a new improved structure with perhaps more amenities. Island Packers, as you probably know, already runs boats out of here to the Channel Islands as well as they do also out of Ventura Harbor. And there, we, there's a chance that they would be moving, they, they might move to this site from where they are now because there would be some operational advantages and we're hopeful that they might expand their operations. Actually, while I was in a meeting this afternoon, my news item popped up on my phone saying that they are back in operation after, you know, after their shutdown for the pandemic. So that's good news as of just a few hours ago. We hope that they would become a, 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 an increasingly important presence here because the tide of the Channel Islands is one of the greatest assets, obviously, that this harbor has. We hope that the funding can be raised for the replacement facility of the Harbor Masters uh, headquarters here, right next to the Coast Guard with views directly out into the mouth of the harbor. There's also the possibility here of some kind of an outdoor uh, entertainment venue with a possibility of some kind of a performance space out over the water with people sitting on shore looking looking at musical or dramatic performances of, of some kind that could be a very unique thing and one reason to consider having it down here rather than up at Fisherman's Wharf or somewhere uh, farther north is that there's a lot of parking that is used in the daytime by the sport fishing operation and in the evening it would be unused. So that could create a lot of efficiencies in terms of being able to share all that parking with daytime and nighttime uses. And there's also the possibility that uh, small cruise ships might be able to come in here. The smaller National Ge Geographic cruise ships might be able to dock in some of the, in, if, if the, some of the slips were rebuilt here, there's a possibility that cruise ships might be able to come in here, bringing an additional stream of visitors without cars for the most part, who could stay on the ship in Harbor or in some of the lodging facilities and provide an additional customer stream coming from the ocean rather than from the land. Possibility, we've had a conversation with the Port of Wainimi if the, if the logistics of them docking in this Harbor were difficult, possibly they might be able to dock in the Port of Wainimi and then shuttle over on boats or shuttle buses. There's also the possibility they might just be able to drop anchor offshore and bring 
visitors in and launches. And what the, that, that map I showed you at the beginning of all the different venues that are within a 30 mile radius could start to make the sort of package that little cruise lines are looking for where if they're gonna put into port, they want a bunch of fun stuff for their people to be able to get to. And that's why we were showing you things like the Reagan Library and, uh, and, and Ojai and, and of course, Oxnard and Ventura and Camarillo as places that people could have fun if they came in on a cruise ship. So right now you see there's just a lot of parking areas here in these little cul-de-sacs. We're thinking that you might be able to reorganize some new and improved buildings facing the water with that same kind of a nice little street and improved promenade like we showed you at Fisherman's Wharf running a lot along the front and might even be able to build a little amphitheater in here. And then during the day, the sport fishing would use a lot of this parking and at night it could fill up with people coming to performances. Here might run the uh, walkway. I'm, I'm dying to show you the promenades and the walkways, but I left it to the end so that we'd get through these use things first. That's the fun part. We were leaving it for last, or the, one of the fun parts. So Susan. Great, so um, here we are to the area north of the Coast Guard. Again, uh, uh, the question is the same. Um, which of the uses and the ideas that David talked about do you think would contribute to the success of this area? And again, we're not asking you to choose only one. We really wanna just get a sense of what of these different ideas do you think could work here? Um, because again, it's a vision plan. So we're not laying out specifically what has to happen here, but instead trying to elaborate on some ideas. I'm definitely seeing still a lot of comments and questions or ideas that are generated in the Q&A about um, maritime and, and uh, ocean learning and education and museums and that sort of thing. So people have a lot of support for those ideas for sure. Good. That's what's gonna make this place really special and just anchor it so firmly to the islands and the ocean. I mean, that's, that's what you got to sell. And just a note too, that we're up to 346 participants in this workshop, an online workshop, which is really a terrific turnout. So thanks to everyone for giving up a little of your time this evening. And as people are responding to this poll, just a, a reminder in case anyone came a little late, um, we will have the copy of this presentation and the same um, online polling questions will be available on the website for the project. So if you know people that weren't able to make it, definitely encourage them to check it out and provide us with their input as well. So we're getting there, um, getting close to almost 90% 90 90 of respondents so far. Um, again, seeing some comments on the public realm stuff and, and David will get to the, the ideas on the streets and sidewalks and getting people around. And the house, some ideas on how, or the support for the houseboat idea too. So there are some more responses coming in on that last section. And um, that's, it's worth pointing out that we're showing these different alternative uses and we're tying them to specific parcels, but there's nothing magic about exactly which of these functions goes on which parcels. So, yep, some of these could move out, around, right? If there's a lot of support for certain ideas, they could go a bunch of different places. I mean, there's, there's a lot of options. Yep. We're not we're not trying to tell you where everything should go. We're just illuminating the possibilities. All right, Andrew, let's go ahead and end the poll. Um, so people really support that idea of the expanded island packers location. So about 80% there, um, new landing dock or new sport fishing landing and docks, 72%, 66% sent for that outdoor theater with a floating stage, a really fun idea. Um, and lots of support still and nearly 50% or over on um, the other concepts as well. So um, quite a bit of support here for most of these items. So David, let's move to the next site. Thank you, Susan. So now we're gonna look at the peninsula point. So much of the peninsula is housing that's gonna stay there for a long time, but the point is an enormous opportunity. You've got the old older hotel and the former restaurants down here, which I remember with, with great pleasure visiting back in the eighties when our kids were little. Uh, but there's a new hotel that's planned for most of the end of the peninsula here. And it's really lovely. It's a Hyatt House Hotel that is planned with a new, a, new entry, a new entry plaza at the end of Peninsula Road. 
and a four-story hotel with a bar and, and, and lounge looking out over the water and a separate building with a restaurant in it. And again, the expanded improved promenade coming around the end. Uh, we, we think it's very lovely. We, 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 have, we, we had nothing to do with it. We're just complimenting the people who have designed it. Then there's a little, so the hotel would be here. Then there's this little parcel over here, which is loving, lovingly known as the remnant. And it's available and it's really a, a, a strategically located along the waterfront. So we've thought about what might go there. So if here's where the hotel, here's how the hotel would be laid out. This is the remnant piece. So it could have, it could be as simple as just a little lane that comes around here. You could have some kiosks and uh, uh, vending along the edge that might be something as simple as a taco shack could have bike rentals. If the if ships if large ships came in here and this was a point of arrival, people could just land here and grab a bike and start here and explore the rest of the harbor. Possibility of little cafe right along the water's edge. Another alternative that was mentioned is the possibility of some 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 townhouses or condos that would have frontage right onto the water. Here's a couple ideas of how they could look. They, they could look like these ones. These are actually up in River Park, which, which we had a lot to do with the master plan for a number of years ago. Or these uh, more modern ones that are actually in Utah in a very beautiful new town. But something like, I mean, sitting, we imagine the sitting on the decks of those looking out over the water could be pretty spectacular. Uh, it's, it's a very small piece, so there's not a lot of options of what you could do with it. So some small retail or some small housing uh, seem, seem like the main options. So Susan? Great, so now we wanna ask the similar question here about Peninsula Point. Um, we have a few more sites to go after this and then we'll get into the um, streets and sidewalks and some of the, the concepts there, um, but definitely wanna focus in on Peninsula Point. So we're looking at ideas or um, uses like food trucks and food stands, uh, plaza pocket parks, bike rental and townhouses. And again, that little key map is there and there's still always the other category. So if there was a specific use that you heard David talk about earlier that you're envisioning Peninsula Point and you really think that could work here, um, please feel free to, to click that other. And as I mentioned, you can't type in your response on the survey, but you certainly can add it into the Q&A um, and just say additional use or however you wanna characterize that. So let's see, we're, we're getting up there. Um, So there's still a lot of the same ideas coming in, a lot of um, some idea or love of the houseboats and the boatels. Um, question about whether those, that the boatels and the, the houseboats and the little um, trailer park idea could be year round or are those considered only short term? Um, could they, how long would those be up? So there's some questions about that. David, I don't Good know if question. you wanna. We're, we're, we're really excited about that possibility too. And it wasn't our idea, so we're, yep. that, I mean, yeah, so I think the, the answer is it's not intended to be a short term. Somebody said, wouldn't it only be around for a month? But no, those are actually would be businesses and um, those yeah. would be semi-permanent or permanent locations for those. Yes. Um, there's also some questions about parking and are we providing enough parking um, for all these different uses? And so um, that's, maybe a, that's, that's, a, that's a fascinating question. And we're, as we show you the plans that were the, the concepts we're suggesting for, for the walking and biking and, and water taxi, the idea would be that people could arrive at the harbor and park their car once and spend a half a day or a day or a weekend walking and biking around, which would drastically reduce the number of parking spaces you would need because people wouldn't be driving and parking and driving and parking and driving and parking. But we had one, of course, enough parking must be provided. Right. And again, be, you know, being a vision, a vision level plan, we're not yeah. got to figure out what those that mix of uses specifically would be. And then you develop those parking. Then we figure out how much parking you need and you have it. Yeah. All right. So, Andrew, let's go ahead and end this poll. Um, so Plaza and Parker Park is 71 percent. Not far behind is bike rental. Um, about 63 percent there for food trucks and 31 percent for some townhouses, along with 13 percent for other. Um, let me just look at the Q&A real quick and see if there's any questions.
quick responses on other. Um, small off-leash dog park. Um, don't reduce any of the, the green spaces. So, um, and no fee parking. So just a few comments that came in on the other, but <laughs> all right, let's move on to the next, okay. the next area. Okay. Oh, geez, not again. There we go, okay. So now we're gonna look at the opportunity. So we've done that with the Victoria side and the peninsula. Now we're gonna look at a few parcels down the, down the Harbor Boulevard side. And then we're gonna talk about the walkways and bikeways and, and the, 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 out, the public realm. So this piece Y3 is an incredibly privileged piece of land that has very little on it. it it's one of the pieces that projects out into the Harbor and uh, it and this parking parcel are both available in the very near, you know, pretty much now. Uh, offers will be accepted. Uh, and this has also the very interesting characteristic of having this good sized water parcel in front of it that is not currently developed where it could be developed for small docks or it could be developed for a larger dock that might be able to accept a super yachts you know, big visiting vessels that might tie up here that, that would come in with people with, you know, a lot of money and resources to, you know, help change the trajectory of the, of the business here. Um, so the most obvious possibility for, well, one, a possibility for this is some, is mixed use that could be something like the possibilities we showed you on Fisherman's Wharf site where you could have shops along the waterfront walkways. You could have some kind of court, dining court, outdoor space in the center with, with restaurants. You could have, you, there could, it could include a boutique hotel. Um, uh, it could also include some, uh, some types of housing if that would create enough revenue to really support the improvement of the area around it. Another option, another possibility that has been mentioned by the steering committee that we think is fantastic and could tie in beautifully with the public market idea would be a culinary center, a culinary institute that could become sort of a magnet of healthy food that could be really tied in beautifully with the, with the best of Ventura County's seafood and agriculture and uh, create a, a, a culture of you know, support a culture of healthy food at the harbor. Possibility of a dock that's big enough that large boats could come in and tie up and start to put this little harbor on the map for the larger boating community going up and down the coast and elevate its status to something more comparable to, you know, Santa Barbara or Newport or some of the other bigger, more well-known uh, harbors and ports of call. Uh, one, so one possibility would be this parking lot would just serve one and two story buildings here that would have shops and restaurants. You could have some nice courtyard spaces like we showed the pictures of a minute ago. Perhaps this L-shaped, this C-shaped building here could be a boutique hotel with, and this is a south facing edge. So that this, these courtyards could be full of sun and the promenade could come straight across the face of these buildings and then go on up toward Harp, up toward uh, Channel Islands Boulevard and have a beautiful promenade. We're gonna show you the pictures in a minute around the outside. And there's the possibility of something a little bit like one of the buildings we showed on the Fisherman's Wharf site that could, it could have some more shops on the other side of this little street and some housing upstairs and perhaps some parking uh, inside the, the lower levels of this building and creating and if the well, bike and walk whale on this side of Harbor Boulevard. And then one important, very important thing we're showing in these diagrams is the idea of these coming in, looking and feeling and acting like small streets rather than turning in and just finding yourself in an enormous parking lot and wondering where the buildings are. So here is a cross section drawing showing out of the water here in either a large dock or smaller docks, and then some shops facing along the water, perhaps some offices or even some housing or, or, or lodging upstairs, perhaps a hotel here and some more shops up here along this new little loop street that might come in off Harbor Boulevard. 
possibility of a building a little bit like we illustrated on the other side, which might which would have shops also in all the ground shops and restaurants and all the ground level perhaps hotel or condos uh, upstairs and then additional parking facilities possibly underneath this plaza there's a beautiful project that some friends of ours designed in Manhattan Beach which we've actually had a couple pictures of in here that courtyard with a fireplace in it it's a couple blocks off the pier in Manhattan Beach and it has parking underneath it just like this and so just zoomed in on just to show how the water, the promenade and courtyards could face out to the water and then you could have the, the new pier uh, uh, at the end and perhaps a deck with a little restaurant on it. So, Susan? Great, so here is the question for this area south of Harbor Landing. Some people know it as X3. So we're looking at boutique offices, integrated waterfront living, that idea of a super yacht dock culinary center boutique hotel and visitor serving commercial. And while um, folks are answering this question, um, David, I'll throw out a, a, some of the ideas that are coming through the, the Q&A. Um, you mentioned water taxi briefly, and I know you're gonna get yes. into that a little bit more, but there's definitely yeah. was a number of people saying, yes, yes, they like the idea of a water taxi. So when you get yeah. to that, you might wanna elaborate some more. And um, every, there, every one of these little, every one of these new developments that we're showing would, would certainly have at least one water taxi stop so that you could hop around amongst these places just freely. Yeah. Um, people, quite a few or a number of people saying they like that idea of the culinary center in the chat here. Um, there was some concern I've noticed throughout some of the different questions on what about just the boaters and the boating community and what's already happening and the way the oh. harbor is being used. So maybe you wanna address them, some of those existing of users. So do you want to mention anything about those existing the existing boaters and how they'll still have access and or Mark, if you want to talk through yeah, that? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. I mean, it would, pretty much we, we have marinas virtually everywhere that a marina can go at this point in time. Um, what we do have is X3, which is what we what Dave just went through that little strip in front of X3, where which is now you know at the edge of the dirt. That is developable, but there's not a lot of space because it's got it can only go out as far as the adjacent marinas. But that is an area for development. Um, the other marinas are already developed, and and there have been questions about you know you do have slips that are that are aging, and 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 there are two marinas that are currently uh, very active in re rebuilding th those marinas, and there are two more that we've already initiated conversations with for rebuilds. Um, there's other, the, the, some questions seem to uh, indicate that the boatyards would go away. Well, no, the, the, the Channel Islands boatyard is going nowhere. And that's the big boatyard on, on Victoria. The small boatyard, which is Anacapa, that's the N1 parcel that David indicated for possibly the, the trailer boat and, or bed and breakfast. Um, I, don't, I do not see the need for two boatyards. I think that having a boatyard in Ventura Harbor and having one here kind of keeps them honest but there is a significant and will continue to be a significant boatyard. So there will still oh, yeah. be services, services for boaters and the drocks that need uh, rebuilding are in the process of getting rebuilt. Yeah, maybe I, maybe I should have mentioned that right up front that none of this would be displacing or reducing or in any way eating into the boating activities and boating related services. And, and the idea would be to enhance right. the ability of uh, provide a lot more amenities for folks who visit or live on boats and to provide a much more profitable environment for the commercial fishing business to bring their catch into and to provide a lot more amenities for folks who are going sport fishing or already going out to the island. So none of the existing water-based water activities would be reduced. The idea would be to to, to enhance them and increase them. Great, Thank for, thanks for that. So um, Andrew, if you wanna go ahead and end this poll and we'll take a look at the results there. Um, as I noted already in the, the Q&A, some of the comments, the, a lot of support for the culinary center idea um, along with visitor serving commercial. Um, next would be the boutique hotel and there's some significant support there about almost well, 43% for the super yacht dock. Um, and about 40% for waterfront living opportunities. A little less for the offices um, and 
but there is a quite a bit there then for the boutique hotel too. So 10% on other. So looking forward to checking out more of the comments in the Q&A or also when um, there is the email for this project and ability for you to take this poll again on the website and actually be able to write in some ideas too. So we'll move on to the, the next site. Cool. We're almost, yeah, we're, we're, we're getting there. And, uh, this just... Okay, there we go, jeez. Okay, so now the Marine Emporium landing is the most successful in, in my personal opinion uh, of the current, uh, and one of the newer and very successful commercial operations uh, at the Harbor right now. There's a number of really good restaurants in there. My wife and I used to go to the Whale's Tail and Port Royal years ago, and we still go to these restaurants here and uh, uh, it's very successful and nice. This is the oldest building of the group as is probably quite clear. And the lessee of this site is in the process of planning uh, remodeling and expansion of this building. It might be, have the potential to, more, to serve more the commercial fishing uh, side of the ledger. And uh, we would certainly, we would certainly anticipate that the new and enhanced promenade could come right across the face here, creating sort of a new and improved front for this complex and the new and improved promenade could go around the outside as well. Then jumping down to the south, here's the old whale's tail site. Right now you've got the, uh, you've got the museum, uh, You've got the museum here on K2 and you've got the boating center here right next to it. And uh, sadly, the whale's tail is no longer there. There's also a piece of, there's also a water parcel here that could have different types of docks or slips, uh, perhaps visitor docks. Uh, and I fondly remember sitting in the whale's tail, looking out at the water and having really good food, but it's, uh, restaurants aren't that, this is an old building and restaurants just aren't that big anymore. So ideas about what might be done with the existing building. I mean, it could be replaced by another building, but uh, this sort of Marine touch aquarium or education center is certainly something that could go in part of that existing building. Another possibility is it could be adaptively reused, maybe the upper floor as a bed and breakfast Maybe there could be a restaurant, a small restaurant downstairs and bed and breakfast upstairs, and maybe you could have a learning center in the rest of it. And it's also a good sized parcel. So there could be another building built uh, uh, in addition to the one that's already there. So just a few ideas. What do you think? All right, so let's um, think about the whale's tail site, bed and breakfast with a restaurant, just a restaurant on its own. Um, the Maritime Marine Education Center and Aquarium, and I'm pretty sure that's going to get a, a lot of positive response because we had a lot of write-ins for that, um, this idea of a museum and education before we even got to this site. So people and, have been hung hungry for hearing a little bit more about that. And the, the potential synergy of the existing uh, uh, boating center where kids learn to boat and the existing Maritime Museum and then an educational use here would form a really nice sort of a civic educational cluster at this location that could be also enhanced with a restaurant and maybe okay. other things. And there's been also lots of specific ideas for restaurants and wineries and breweries and places to dance and, <laughs> and venues and lots, lots of great ideas in the, the, the chat, the comments as well and the question. Totally. So we've got little quicker responses to this one because there's not as many choices presented. But also um, everybody's getting good at this thing. Yes, that's true too. Um, still a few comments on um, worry about parking and making sure that you know, parking is accommodated but not taking over, um, the parking is not taking over the sites as well. So well, yeah, well right now, if you just look around, parking is everywhere. So we're yeah. gonna look at that in a minute. All and right, as so. As, par as, important, as important as parking in, is people don't come to a destination for the parking. They'll stay away if there isn't enough, but they need, it's the fun stuff we need to focus on. 
Okay, Andrew, um, let's go ahead and end that poll. And not surprising, again, 71% um, like that idea of the Marine Education Aquarium, about 60% for the restaurant, and a little less on the, the bed and breakfast, but still um, nearly 40% there, and 11% of people with lots of other ideas, and uh, some of those, I'm sure, are those that have been expressed for the other the other sites. And so we'll, we'll look for more of that in the, the Q&A and your responses as well. So let's move on to the public realm. Okay. So is the survey gonna go away there, Andrew? Yep. Okay, thank you. Okay, so as the most important thing we believe to making this a destination where people will come for a morning or a day rather than a donut or a t-shirt is to make it a place where people want people will park their car once and then start looking around and say oh honey let's go oh, what's that over there let's go look at that let's rent a bike and spend the day so the 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 geography of this place is the two main gateways are at harbor and channel islands and victoria and channel islands those have to have it needs those need to look like you've really arrived somewhere and this green line around here indicates the possibility of putting a new pedestrian and bicycle loop around the outside. The pedestrian promenades along the water and then connecting back to the edge, the edge route. There's a bunch of parks and there's a new one that would be planned. All of these could be improved and this one would be a new one that would be associated with Fisherman's Wharf. The water taxi knitting things together inside. The possibility of little overlooks that could be built all along here. We're going to show you pictures of those now. So to really just, just take every possible advantage of the water's edge. So speaking of not yet taking every possible advantage of the water's edge, you got some okay sidewalks. And during the pandemic, people are actually putting tables out here. But it, it's not a real lively thing. So we're suggesting that at a minimum everywhere, there should be a wide, comfortable walkway. In some cases, a new building could be built close to or right up against the walkway with outdoor dining, either under an arcade like this or the building just set back farther and this could just be an outdoor patio. There's also the possibility along the water's edge where right now you just look at the rocks going down to the water that in certain places, little decks could be built out over those rocks so that you could actually sit right bang on the water's edge instead of only over here where you're across the sidewalk and up the rock bank from it. So this could provide essentially almost like a wharf kind of experience, a lot of different places around the harbor. And damn it, there we go. Okay, and little kiosks or little restaurants, little bars could be built on such structures. That's really kind of minting new real estate. I mean, right now it's just the rocks that go down to the water. And I mean, you need them because they keep the water from out of the pallet, but you could, have, you could have the possibility of sitting right on the water. And you could have these, even where there aren't otherwise buildings, you could have them along the edge of some, an area where there's currently a park or even along the edge of what's currently a parking lot where you could create these little activity nodes and revenue sources. Uh, because if people are walking around, if they find a really interesting thing like every minute or two on their walk, that's a lot less likely they're gonna get bored to go home. Then also tying everything together would be the idea of a water taxi. It could be this type that uh, just stops periodically and run, it could run a route that could go up into the North Harbor and stop at each of these points of attraction, could stop at each marina, could stop at each restaurant, could stop at each dock. And the, this is one type. There's the possibility of another type, which we don't have a picture of in this presentation, which would be more just like a little barge that you could just come onto with your bike and just a little electric like a little electric vehicle that you could, you and your bike and your family and your dog could just hop on and ride across and get on. 
So then if you have this network of promenades that run along the water's edge, the thing about the harbor is it's three strips of land. It's a skinny strip of land along Harbor Boulevard. It's a skinny strip of land along Victoria. It's the peninsula down the middle. The only thing that connects them, if you don't have a boat, is the Channel Islands Bridge, which looks like this. So we're asking ourselves, wouldn't it be nice if a walkway that is has the amenity of these promenades that we're thinking of for the water's edge could just come right across this bridge? Well, as luck would have it, it could, because there's four lanes of traffic here and they could be scooted over. Now, by the way, I'll start by saying, this is the city of Oxnard Street. So these things would need, all of these things we're showing you about streets would need to be done in a cooperative fashion with the county and the city and the community working hand in glove. But physically, there is space and structure that could support having the same sort of a, a bikeway and walkway running along the bridge that would that would basically continue the waterfront promenades right over the water so that you could come from the Harbor Boulevard side. You, you could even have a stair that drops down onto the peninsula in the middle, for instance, where there is a dirt area which has been proposed to be converted to a park. There's the pause. So this has already been, we didn't draw this, some others drew this previously. So you could have a nice little park right here at the top of the peninsula, right with an access with a stair coming down right off the, the bridge. And actually you could have a path coming in right behind the fire station here. And one of, one, of the op, one of the operations that's currently in the harbor is a rowing club. And they don't, they don't have much of a home. So we suggested that there could be a rowing dock located here. You could create boat storage under the bridge. I mean, there's already a roof, it's called the bridge. And the, so they could operate out of here and youth and adult rowing clubs could operate within the harbor there's actually enough room to do a, a, a legitimate 2,100 meter rowing course that could just run from the North Harbor under the bridge to the South Harbor. You could have places where people could stand along the promenade and on the, on the nice new bridge we showed and watch the boat races running back and forth under here. That, I mean, that's a fun activity of, of pretty important proportions, we think. Then Harbor Boulevard, uh, runs, of course, not only up to Ventura, but then comes in and runs along between the beach neighborhood and the harbor. And it's kind of a, an ordinary looking big old wide street. And it's got the housing on one side and you got the parking lots over here. And so we asked ourselves, you know, wouldn't it be nice if there were a beautiful walkway and bikeway along this edge and it looked a little bit more like you had arrived at a, at a, at a cool destination rather than you know just, just a big old street. So yes, it could be possible to scoot the traffic over a little bit like we did on, on the bridge where you'd have the southbound lane and the northbound lane and the left turn lane. You could have a parking lane here so that folks could park to visit the harbor, you'd, here'd be the parking in front of residences over here. This is the existing sidewalk, but you could have a two-way bikeway running along this whole edge so that folks, and not only would it provide a, a nicer way for visitors to the harbor to sort of get around across the bridge and down, down along Harbor Boulevard, it would also make this a much more pleasant environment for folks from the neighborhood to walk or bike over into the harbor bringing perhaps more customers from just the surrounding neighborhoods, never mind from far and wide. It occurred to us that even that Harbor Boulevard as it heads up along the beach neighborhoods toward Ventura Harbor and downtown Ventura has, and again, this would have to be done with in collaboration with the city of Oxnard, but we do a lot of work on streets. And it looks to us like you could just put a two-way bikeway right up along the, 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 the ocean side of Harbor Boulevard so that folks could ride their bikes right on up to the hotel here and to the, yeah, the, the Hollywood Beach 
and up to Ventura Harbor and onward, you know, to, to the fairgrounds in downtown Ventura. And then on the Victoria side, there's just a two lane road and a very wide right of way. You've got the Navy base over here. Right now, the, the west side of Victoria is just the back side of the boat yards. And we're suggesting that it could become the, a new front for some of these new uses that we have shown might be possible along Victoria. So we made a drawing of just one way this could happen. So instead of having a two lane road going right next to the harbor, you could scoot the two lane road over. You got all kinds of room to get, have a, 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 this would be the road that would just carry people to Silver Strand. You could have a low speed sort of an, a, like a, a low speed access road just for to create a new pleasant front to come into the harbor. You could have a little parking, some landscaping. So this edge could look like the like the edge of a very important harbor and not so much like, you know, the back of some boat yards. And you could have the same two-way bikeway and a walkway leading into new uses, whether it's the new development on the sport fishing site or whether it's the new fisherman's wharf development or whether it's the Airstream uh, hotel operation or whatever, but it would be a front, a beautiful front rather than a not so beautiful backside. And then on, oh, I'm sorry, just a minute. So now everything's okay. So then one of the things we've noticed is that it's hard to find where you're going here. I mean, I know the place very well and I was supposed to meet some folks down there for a little boat tour and I couldn't find the building they were talking about. So if I can't find it, visitors are gonna get lost. So right now it's, you know, just, you know, where do I go? So what we're suggesting is that some clear new gateways and some clear directional signage. Actually, this drawing was done by a plan that was prepared for the harbor quite a few years ago, but wayfinding, branding and wayfinding so that you know you've arrived and you know where you can go to park, where you can go to find your destination, et cetera. And those kinds of wayfinding, gate, the gateway signage and wayfinding could happen at each of these new little streets that brings you in so that instead of finding yourself just in, in a bunch of parking lots, you find yourself with clear signage that lets you know to turn into this little street to find all these new interesting things. So this is the last point is, so you know the obvious question is, well, who pays for that? Well, there's a bunch of possibilities. Um, and clearly the to pay for the promenades, the park improvements, street improvements is gonna require a clear plan and some financing strategies. So, and we would point out that some of the improvements, especially at the north end of the harbor, especially something like a landmark change to the Channel Islands Bridge and the, at least the beginnings of walkways along Harbor and Victoria coming down south could really change the allure of the harbor as a destination, as a place for really good quality developers to invest some serious money in fine new buildings and uses. So we think that could help jumpstart the reinvestment that the harbor needs so much. And certainly some of the improvements like the new wharf at Fisherman's Wharf, some of the walkways around Fisherman's Wharf or the, or the X3 parcel, they could just be required as part of that project. And if there's a clear master plan of how those, how that whole network of walkways and bikeways and, and water taxis is supposed to work, then the harbor can require each developer to do their part. Also, if the Val, the, the, the harbor is in a unique position that the structure of their leases uh, provides for them to share in the increased revenue. If the businesses in the harbor start doing better, the, harbor, the county gets a piece of that action. So as the development and the activities and the businesses become more successful, that provides some additional revenue that the harbor could assign to helping to pay for the construction and the maintenance of these kinds of 
connecting facilities. Certainly, if you have a plan, you can apply for and get grants from from state and federal uh, state and federal grants. There's a lot of grants out there for active transportation, walking and biking, for economic development, for recreational facilities. And if it becomes clear that the value of this place is rising, going to rise steadily rather than decline steadily as it has for so long, then the city and or the county could determine that the property taxes are going to be going up. The sales taxes are probably going to be going up. The transient occupancy taxes from hotel and motel and botel businesses would be going up. And on that basis might find it prudent to also invest some city funds, some county funds in enhancing the long neglected infrastructure of the South Harbor to put it on a I'll put it on an even footing with places like Seabridge just to the north, the collection up at the freeway, downtown Ventura, which has been steadily improving, Ventura Harbor, which has been steadily improving. It'd make it once again a good bet for a reinvestment, we think. Susan. Great. So this is a different question, finally, than the other ones that we've been having. Um, so there's lots of different ideas that David mentioned, and they're all listed here, and probably not even all of them he mentioned. Um, the promenade, the waterfront decks with kiosks, water taxi, multi-use trail, the bridge, um, the park and the rowing facility, along with branding, and even the new Victoria Avenue frontage. Um, so Again, this is just what, what things are you most excited about or that got you most excited? And I, as I was going through the Q&A while you were talking, there is a lot, a lot of comments about um, positive responses to the idea of protected bike lanes and just bike lanes in general. It's even, someone even talking about, let's make it go all the way to Santa Barbara and extend those around. <laughs> let's take into account that people are riding electric bikes and there's lots of bikes around. Um, lots of positive comments about the bridge and the rowing. Um, the rowing facility as well. So I'm seeing a lot of really positive stuff there. Um, a few comments about maybe being careful with trees because we don't want to block any views. Um, so just locations of trees are, so, you know, of course, would be something we would consider as well or to be considered. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, I'm and, still and I'll put in a plug for the bike thing because we work in lots of cities in lots of places and biking is always a popular subject. Uh, this area is just triply blessed with benign, very gentle climate, very rarely too cold, very rarely too hot, and just flat as a pancake. So, I mean, there's, I can't imagine a better environment for biking. And if the streets can be made safe and comfortable and beautiful for that activity, I think we're going to get just a lot of people coming in from all around and people who just decide to spend a week here and just leave their car parked the whole week because it's just too fun to bike. Perfect, thank you. So let's give it another few seconds here, Andrew. Um, there was a lot of choices, a lot of things to think about. Um, Looking back on the Q and A here, and again, just seeing seeing more positive comments. To a lot of people, really like these public improvements. There's a few comments uh, worried about taking lanes away um, on across the some of the roadways, but in general, we're just seeing a lot of very well, positive. The, thoughts. the only place, the only place that we that we showed the possibility of taking a lane away would be on Harbor Boulevard, running north of the harbor up toward Ventura. Uh, and you know that, that that's an optional thing. There's other ways to get up there on local on little local streets running yep. along the beach, and so, nothing like that would be done without very carefully studying it to make sure that it wasn't going to uh, tie traffic up. Yeah. All right. So, um, Andrew, let's go ahead and oh, you already closed it, and you're sharing. So, um, waterfront pr promenade, which has a lot of these different um, improvements, eighty six percent. But you see a lot of very positive responses to most of these ideas. Um, I mentioned the rowing facility that seemed like it was getting a lot of comments. A little less support here, but um, definitely a lot of 
probably the folks that that are that know the rowing um, community are probably responding a lot in the, the Q and A there. But forty eight percent that's nearly fifty percent of people on this call um, are, are looking at that as a positive branding in the 60% multi-use trail, the water taxi, as we heard a lot of comments coming in. Um, so just a lot of really positive response to the, the public improvements and that this, these kinds of things really do add to the, one of the number one things people said in that survey that they love to do in the Harbor was walking and biking and just spending time. And these kinds of improvements definitely would help in, enhance that. And, um, and it's these improvements that make the difference between this being a destination place versus a bunch of nice projects that are near each other. Yeah, I'm just looking at the, the question and answer. I don't know, um, Andrew or, or Mark, are there any other questions that you are seeing pop up that you wanna highlight? Questions or comments in the Q&A? Well, I think there there is um, a misperception about Victoria. I, it, it, it seemed that, that some in the audience were thinking that the boater related services were going to go away and that's just not the case. No. Oh, I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry if I gave that impression. No, no, no. No, I, I you didn't, but I think that there was a there Well, was a, I might I might have implied that and I apologize. But the Channel Islands Landing, I mean a huge boatyard is going nowhere. It's got its lease uh, extends to I believe off the top of my head 2054. Yeah, so um, that is that would still be a fence along there, but it could be nicely landscaped and have a nice bikeway along the edge of it. And I think David indicated, or at least we talked about, you know, maybe do some dry stack there, uh, uh, provide additional space to do something a little bit more exciting. That's a possibility, right. but that, but that lessee would have to weigh in on that. He would have to be part of that. Um, the launch certainly. ramp's not going anywhere. The launch ramp's going to stay there. All the parking for the launch ramp's going to stay there. So, so those boater related services won't won't go anywhere. Um, yeah. What we do see here is a lack of of um, commercial. Uh, like boat boat uh, maintenance facilities. And what we've seen is that they go upland because the rent's cheaper, quite frankly. And then they, when they do their services, they come down to the boats and do their services. And that is a challenge, um, you know, because there is space. I mean, there, there's space right now available for those types of services. But I mean, I think if, if I ran that type of service, I'd probably go upland for my warehousing as well and then come down here to do the service. But, but those are things we've considered, but boating services are not going anywhere. The, the commercial wharf's not going anywhere. Um, we may move it, but it's gonna stay on, on that Eastern side of the Harbor. And, and so this Harbor will continue to maintain its, its boating culture. There's no doubt about it. We want it to be. Um, most yeah. of what we're talking about is on land that should complement the marinas and believe me, the marinas, what they really need is some exciting development on land to help them fill the slips. Um, one person indicated that we have a lack of slips. No, we don't. Uh, we have probably 75 to 80% occupancy, which means we have 20 to 25% vacancy. Uh, as compared to up, you know, the other marinas, particularly south of us, we have a lot of vacancy. And, and the way to create more occupancy is to develop the land to make this more of an exciting harbor because then boat owners want to have their boats there because it's exciting and they want to go down to their boats and use their boats or just hang on their boats because it's now an exciting harbor. It's, it's all part and parcel of the same equation. Great, thanks Mark. Well, again, the comments keep coming in as I look over. Um, so still a lot of support for the small boats and just Mark, I think reinforce that that's definitely a part of the, the whole package for sure. Um, There's some comments about making sure you accommodating electric vehicles, maybe even neighborhood electric vehicles, mm -hmm. um, concepts yeah. for those as well. So Very um, important. I see lots Very of things important. about comments about dogs as well. So really making sure that we keep this place a pet friendly <laughs> location. Um, so um, a, noting here that just a, a comment, we still have about 200 questions that are or comments that are, that are still coming in. So um, just to note again, that we will have all of these um, organized and in, in for you to, to look at at the end of this, or not the end of the workshop, we'll have to take some, a few, <laughs> a little bit of time to organize those, but they will all be um, part of this workshop summary. You, you, did, you definitely tested me. This, that was a lot of questions hitting us. I think yeah. we answered according to what I'm looking at, 386 of them, but there's still 234 out there. And a lot of it was, was your recommendations and your yep. ideas. I appreciate it. And, and the curt answer of thanks wasn't because we're dismissing it. That's all the time we had to address it but everything will be considered. And there were a lot of wonderful ideas coming through. And um, as Susan indicated, 
you know, about 250 that we haven't had a chance to answer yet, but we'll definitely get to them. All right. So, David, you want to talk a little bit? Or oh, our... I'm sorry. Here, just a minute. We've got, there we go. Okay. There we mm -hmm. go. So, what's You're next? I'm going back to Mark. So, um, there were questions about what happens next. And um, go ahead, go ahead to the next slide, David. So this is, we had shown you the top third of, the, of this flow chart, um, which was again, kind of created by residents and we adopted it two years ago. And that's where the visioning comes in. But if you look at all of the different uh, pieces of this, of this flow chart, you'll see there are a lot of steps to get to an approved project. And the project has to ultimately be approved by the, Co the Coastal Commission. And what we've seen is that, um, that the more agreement we have going forward, it makes it easier to get to the Coastal Commission with a project that everybody's for, because the last thing the Coastal Commission wants to be is a referee when you have a lot of opposition to development. So this is why we're doing this visioning, this upfront visioning. And so ultimately what this, what this visioning process will result in is you know, maybe some, revised, some refined visions um, for each of these parcels. Uh, we've got a lot of ideas. We've, we had a lot of ideas coming in. We've gotten your opinions and, and input as to, uh, uh, you know, about these ideas. And, and, and we're going to kind of, as a, as a steering committee, um, you know, th th bring them together, you know, talk about them and, and, and end up with, with a vision, uh, you know, harbor-wide vision or visions for these different developable parcels where the, we can then turn them into, um, in, into a process where we look for developers. And that would be the request for proposals process. And I've assured everybody that I've talked to, and I'll assure you know you that it will be a transparent process. Um, we when we when we put together requests for proposals, we we will need to say you know, indicate kind of what we're looking for for each parcel. But in addition, what we're not looking for, what we won't accept, you know, like <laughs> ten-story high buildings, which you see in other harbors like Marina del Rey and Newport, which we don't want here. We we all agree we don't want that here. Um, so, so those RFPs will, will have those kind of um, you know, particulars in there, but we will keep the RFPs relatively broad because we don't want to stifle developers and we want developers to come at us with, you know, with creative ideas. So, so you know, the next step would be a request for proposals for these developable areas. Some are going to be easier than others. And, um, and some will be, you know, probably more refined than others, but that's where we go next. And, and hopefully, you know, we can get to that RFP process. We can get developers that want to do it because that's the key. You know, we need to find developers. If we don't have developers that are attracted to what we want to do, then we've kind of wasted our time. And as I indicated, this is an enterprise operation. So if we can't attract those private developers to, to develop the exciting developments which are attractive to the public, supported by the county, supported by the city of Oxnard, supporting by, supported by existing harbor businesses and residents, and that meet the financial needs of the county and the city of Oxnard, that we've not accomplished our goal. So that's where we're headed. And now that, that would be the next steps. And again, um, I think we've got one more survey, but before we get there, I'd like to thank you again for your participation. And as Susan indicated, you can, you can track the results of the, the workshop, the answers to these questions on the website, which is channelislandsharbor.org. And um, we do have a final survey and I will turn that over to Susan for that survey. Great, so as Mark, as Mark noted, and we've been talking about, this is just the preliminary concepts of this larger vision plan, which is one step towards making all of this, um, all of these things happen. And so we just wanna get a sense um, for just basically what you've heard tonight, how you feel about the direction that the Channel Islands Harbor Visioning is currently taking. And so you've got um, five choices there, being very comfortable, comfortable, rather neutral, uncomfortable, and very uncomfortable. So just kind of getting a, kind of taking a, a temperature, if you will, from the group. Um, uh, as you're taking this one, I'm looking back on a few other questions. There's Still some very, some very specific parcel specific questions that we'll get to. Um, some may take a little bit more timing to answer those, but those will be there. Um, some folks wanting to say, how can they stay engaged and, and volunteer and, and get involved from that standpoint? So I'm gonna pop the website up in just a second and make sure that you're on the list so that anything that's going on with this project um, from here 
going forward, you'll get direct information, monitor and keep, keep checking on that website too, because all of the updates will be there. So definitely do that. Um, we definitely wanna keep, keep reaching out and keep people informed and engaged. Um, we've got about 85% of folks who have responded. So I'm gonna give about five more seconds and we'll pop up this answer. There is a couple, a few questions on timing, Mark, and I know that you're not a ma magician, you don't have a magic ball, but a <laughs> uh, crystal ball, I mean, but maybe you could give a sense of maybe just even for the plan itself, or you've already well, talked I about think, the RFPs. I think but finalizing the plan, we're probably looking at, and I don't want to put a lot of pressure on you, David, but I don't mind putting some pressure on you. Um, you know, try, try to get it done pretty quickly, you know, maybe within a month, and then because what we really need is direction to go to go out with the R, with the request for proposals. And, and, it, and it's it's not going to be a plan in the sense that we're going to say, well, this goes here, and this goes here, and this goes here, and this goes here. It's going to be this framework of public realm and connectivity, and then a range of options for the specific parcels that'll play out over time, depending on the response and the financing that that, that, that is offered and and further further re response from the community in, in response to specific proposals. Yep. All right, so um, Andrew, if you wanna go ahead and end that poll. Um, so you can see about 45% very comfortable. You add that to the 33 that are comfortable and that gives us about what, 78%. So cool. the, I think that, am I adding right there? Yeah, 78% um, seem to well, be pretty great. much in favor of some neutral and some, you know, some still on the fence and that's okay. We've got, you know, as we move, as we move deeper into the details um, that may bring some of you who have some questions and some hesitations along and we hopefully we can do that. Um, but it's, it's definitely a positive to see that this many people are feeling comfortable. Um, another couple of questions that were in the, I see here at the end and we'll pop up the next slide here and it's answered a couple questions I see is what if there are people who couldn't come tonight? Um, can they still listen to this presentation and participate? And there will be a slide in just a moment once we get through this craziness that's where oh. happened there. I, there we no, go. I think that's, oh yeah, yeah. Right. There we go. <laughs> so the, um, I've mentioned the website several times I just wanted to make sure that you see that this is here. Um, there will be a summary report. Somebody asked when the summary and when the recording will be available. Um, the, the recording will probably be posted, I think, by tomorrow, if not um, over the weekend. Um, it takes a little bit of time for it to download. And then we're also going to associate a survey, an um, online survey that has the same questions that you answered tonight. That'll be associated with that as well. So we'd be asking people to watch the presentation and then take the survey or kind of do them together. Um, and then the, sur the summary report will probably take a little bit more time to make sure that we have all the questions answered and organized as well, but watch for that on the website too. Um, that, that URL there is, we discovered as we were making this slide is unusually hard to read when you make it all lowercase, but just, it's just www.channelislandsharbor.org slash visioning. And you also, if you just go to the Channel Islands Harbor website there you it's very easy to get to the visioning page there's a kind of a pop-up that that comes up so it can it'll drive you there as well so we thank you all very very much for your time tonight and um, all your great comments all your great thoughts and ideas and um, look forward to the next time we all get together thank you very much yeah thank you